local government with um, with other local entities. So, Nicolas, uh, back to you whenever you're ready uh, to your presentation. And just in case, if anyone has an issue with us recording, we are just uh, going to record the panels because then we are going to have a blog. But if anyone um, has a, an issue with that, please let us know. All right. Thank you, Nicolas. Uh, let me share my screen. Do you see my presentation? Yes. 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 All yes. right. I uh, will put my speaking notes on my desktop. So, hi, welcome, or good morning, or bon matin, if you are sitting in my place in the French part of Canada. So, today I will be presenting the Canadian Federated Search Project. Uh, to start, let's have uh, an overview of the data availability uh, across Canada. So regarding uh, governmental uh, open data sources, we have three government levels. So we have data coming from the government of Canada. We have also the open data coming from 13 provincial territorial sources. And also we have a lot of municipalities disseminating uh, also open data. Uh, the, the journeys for uh, accessing open data, so due to the multiple sources of open data, uh, it can be quite difficult for us to find the targeted information. Uh, as an example, if someone wants to do a research regarding the positive impact of carpooling on air and water quality across the St. Lawrence River area, so it's the, the light blue area on my map, uh, this person will probably need to search for open data in more than seven portals it will need to connect to the open data portal for the Canadian one. It will also need to go to the Ontario, to the province of Quebec, New Brunswick or Nova Scotia. And maybe if he wants to have information about local programs of carpooling, it will go to the cities of Toronto, Montreal or Quebec City. At the end, for him, it will be easier if he was able to access all the information in a single portal, regardless of the data source. To be able to uh, offer a one-stop portal to Canadian containing all the federal, provincial, and territorial data sets, we have two types of solutions, I can say. Uh, the first solution is to create a big data warehouse where all the information will be stored. So in this one data will go in the data warehouse. Uh, this type of solution, I think, is working at a local level with low number of uh, data sets, but for something at the national scale with large data set, with a lot of data set, uh, there's a lot of showstoppers. Uh, first of all, the data volume and complexity. So we are not dealing only with small CSV or Excel file. Uh, an as an example, some uh, Earth observation data are quite big and need a complex data structure to be maintained and distributed. So it would be an issue. And also I can see issues with uh, all the data synchronization and the ownership of the data set. Uh, the other solution that we have is to make the PNT data set accessible from the Canadian portal by pointing at the resource uh, in the other portal. So yep, in this one, the PT metadata describing what the data set and how to access it will be stored in the Canadian portal and will give access to the data store somewhere else. The parameters of this federated search. So first, like I mentioned, the data set will stay where it is. We only ingest metadata to make the data set searchable and discoverable in our portal. The scope for our project, it's only with the provincial and territorial portals. So not for the municipal portal, but for the government of Quebec portal, uh, all the, but not all, but a lot of uh, municipalities in Quebec distribute their uh, open data through the open data portal of Quebec. So it's like a one stone, two birds for uh, yeah. the municipal content of Quebec. We are able to get in through the Quebec portal. Uh, the connection to the PT content will be done through metadata API. Uh, regarding the license, there are multiple type of open data license. Some are less, some are more restrictive. 
Uh, for this project, uh, we are only integrating the data distributed with a license compatible with our uh, open government license uh, for the Canada. And we also keeping the original license with the data. So it's a data set with a, a license for Ontario. The data set will keep the license for Ontario. Uh, what we are doing, it's an automated process. We are aiming to have weekly updates on our system and also due to the uh, official languages of Canada. So Canada has English and French as official languages. So we are using AI process to translate the metadata content to be able to offer the metadata in both official uh, languages. For the metadata model that we are using in our system, uh, as mentioned, we need to have something supporting multiple languages. So when it's for geospatial content, we are using the HNAP. So HNAP is for the harmonized North American profile of the ISO standard 19.115 of 2003. So it's three standard in fact. So it's the ISO standard plus the North American profile developed by Canada, United States and Mexico. Plus at the federal level in the federal family, we added some specific business rule to the, the NAP to be able to have something more restrictive in our system. And for the regular content, so when there is no uh, geospatial information, we are using the Canadian extension of a CCAN data model, uh, which is based on Dublin Core and both models supports multiple languages. Uh, if we are looking at the ingestion process, so it's the only technical slide of this presentation. So from left to right, we have the PT API, so the, the, the province and territory. There is one metadata model per province. There are several technologies. So now we have to deal with CCAN API, DCAN API, Secret API. Once the, the data is read, we have uh, our transformation process. Uh, what we are doing is develop uh, using the software FME. Uh, FME is come from uh, Safe Software, which is a Canadian company. So it's a, a powerful ETL. And all of this is uh, hosted on our uh, AWS cloud instance. So if we have a look deeper in the process, we uh, first we are transforming all the provincial metadata model to a working model. We are applying uh, a LIA filter based on the license. After we are able to split which data is geo, which is non-geo based on uh, for business rules. So we can do it through metadata information, file format, attribute types, or manually through IDs. Uh, once we have split the geo and non-geo, we are able to, uh, to correlate the, the metadata to the desired, desired uh, metadata model. So the HNAP or the CCAN Canadian extension. And we are doing this uh, through lookup tables. After we have a chain detection process, so given the fact that it's not a one-shot deal, we want to have weekly updates. So we do not want to reprocess all the information on a weekly basis and retranslate all the stuff. So we have a data finder to find what's new, what was updated, what was deleted, or is there no change? So with the new records or the updated records, we are using the translations. So we are using the AWS Translate. Uh, to add the content English translated to French for uh, 12 of 13 provinces of the country. And the rest for Quebec, we are translating French to uh, English. Uh, this it's done to AWS Translate and uh, we need to pay for the usage. So it's why it's important to only go with uh, the Delta. So we don't want to retranslate all the stuff. And at the end, what we have, it's two types of output for this. So we have the, all the metadata. So depending on the type of the metadata, it can be XML file or JSON. So HNAP, it's a, a XML and a CCAN extension, a Canadian extension is JSON. And we also have an execution report. So in this log, we know which data set need to be unpublished for our system if the data was unpublished from the provincial portal. And also we have lists of uh, maybe the lookup table that need to be updated. So if there were new uh, use cases or new data set with unknown mapping scenario, uh, we will know which lookup table needs to be updated. Some lesson learned that we had to, some issues that we had to deal with while developing our solutions. So 
dealing with 13 metadata models is quite a challenge for us. Uh, we need to streamline our process to have something generic to be able to have the lowest maintenance cost as possible solution. Uh, when the metadata model use a standard, it helps a lot for the interoperability, but there's a big difference between following a standard and being compliant with. So it's not 100% sure because if you're following a standard that it will be easy to translate the information if you're not fully compliant with. Uh, so I have two examples. First, uh, we had to deal with unilingual metadata model containing bilingual information. So one field with French and English content, uh, we had to find a way to separate which part of the, the attribute value was in French, which part was in English. So it was quite complicated. And also we got some non plain text information stored in the, the raw metadata. So for Quebec, they were using some specific tags and with this with a kind of css size sheet they were able to translate the tag to uh, italic or bold or underline but when you don't have this information when you're reading the metadata what you have is just strange tag in your system now i have a small demo so it's the json file of a record disseminated by the province of quebec so the left part is the the one coming from Danny Quebec and the right one is from Open Canada portal. So it's the same metadata record. You will notice in the right side of the, the slide that we have information in French and English. And if we want to have something nicer to view, we have the same data set uh, in the HTML mode. So the data set coming from Danny Quebec and the one is on Open Data portal, I selected the English display, so we are able to see English content of a French metadata. Uh, we had the title translated from French to English, so same thing for the metadata description. We also have the URL to connect to the data source. So in the province of Quebec, we have two links. In our system, we have three links. Uh, the explanation is with we added a link to the original metadata. So if you're looking at the third one, so original metadata, in fact, it's the link to the metadata on the Quebec portal. You will see that the, uh, the link is the original one. So it's pointing at the government of Quebec data set. And if we continue, we have keywords or it's kept in French. They were translated automatically with the AWS. For the subject and topic, it's, uh, domain value in our system. So the risk of culture was translated to society and culture and society for the topic. Same thing for the update frequency, Abdamadai was translated to weekly. And finally, the original uh, license was kept. So attribution for Creative Commons uh, is there here in the, in the presentation and we have the, the same in the information at the Quebec uh, in our system, sorry. Uh, my last slide is for our schedules. So half of the geospatial integration is done. So more than, I think it's 5,000 records globally. So the geo and the non-geo stuff uh, will continue this year and next year. So by March, 2023, all the province and territories will be synchronized with our system and all this data will be available at opencanada.ca. That's all, thank you. Thanks so much. And um, I love how you started talking about user journeys and uh, personas to then the whole architecture. So thank you so much. This was a really uh, comprehensive uh, presentation. And usually uh, we leave questions for the end, but I saw a comment in the in the chat. Uh, Andreas, I, I don't know if you are able um, to tell us about the Swix experience, but something that um, you were talking about um, having bilingual um, information and a non-lingual uh, model is something that um, some some countries and some provinces might resonate with. Um, so I I don't know, Andreas, if you could tell us a bit um, about the Swiss experience. Um, uh, not in particular. Okay. It was just five years ago when we uh, built up uh, the Swiss Central Portal and we had to support four languages. 
So I just wanted to express my my uh, sincere um, uh, um, admiration uh, for for you doing it uh, uh, too. That, that's that's all. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, so then let's jump to uh, Buenos Aires presentation. And in this case, we have Javier and Violeta, who will um, talk a bit about their uh, recent um, metropolitan open data portal, which is really important to make like good urban decisions and, and connect data across municipalities, specifically because cities like grow up and convert into metropolitan areas with several administrative um, and also like data governance responsibilities. So um, Javier and, and Violeta, whenever you're ready, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Hi everyone. Um, well, my name is Javier Yaray. Uh, today, Violeta and I want to present the AMBA data platform. The AMBA is the Buenos Aires metropolitan area made up by the city of Buenos Aires and 40 other uh, municipalities of the province of Buenos Aires. It is a, a mega city with an area close to 13,000 square kilometers. Uh, according to the last census from 2010, it has uh, 15 million inhabitants representing 37% uh, of Argentina population. That is uh, why a common balanced and sustainable development is needed, more efficient interjudicional inter services and cooperation between local governments to improve the quality of life of the metropolitan citizens, since the different problems to, that go through their daily lives do not recognize uh, geographic uh, limits or, or boundaries. In 2016, we created the first Ambalad site in collaboration between the city and province. This is a web platform with geo-referenced information on the metropolitan area. It contains more than 200 social demographic, urban, economic, service, and uh, public works indicators. In other words, uh, very relevant information for citizens, academia, uh, private sector, CSOs, and specialists. Uh, we believe that Amadata has uh, the potential to be a tool to enhance the public policies of the metropolitan area. It is the first platform that consolidates information on the AMBA on issues of uh, transportation, uh, habitat, environment, uh, economic de development, health and education, uh, among others. It is the, in, in this way, it enables an integrated analysis of the challenges and opportunities of this huge area. For example, the portal allows the users to know the offer of health services, uh, access to public services and coverage of the population, the availability of a public ambulance uh, service called SAME and the AMBA Health Network. It also allows users to locate the urban and green infrastructure and it offers a map with cultural activities available at the, at the area. Ambadata was inspired by international experiences such as those from Barcelona and Los Angeles. It relies uh, on open government policies to drive transparency, innovation, collaboration, and evidence-based decision-making. In this sense, it is a platform open to all the community. And we are currently working on a renovation of this site with uh, the aim of orienting the platform to an open data portal and promoting a collaborative experience at the metropolitan local government level. Um, now, uh, Violeta, please, uh, telling tell the, the audience about the following step in this project. Okay, thanks. So, hi everyone, uh, I'm Violeta, also from the open government team. So, I wa we wanted to share with you um, our work with the metropolitan data. So this site was, we started to work with uh, 2016. Uh, it was, like Javier said, um, a project where we work with the province of Buenos Aires. And we published this site 
that the site you're seeing right now in 2018. So it's not an open data portal. I mean, it shows indicators and you can um, make analysis and you can explore the information, uh, you know, selecting different indicators and uh, it has this map that is the base of the analysis. So what we're aiming to do is to um, make it into an open data portal and we're trying to make it in a really collaborative way. So um, something to highlight before this is that uh, recently, uh, just I think uh, two weeks ago, we won this contest made by the national government. Uh, it was like an um, open, open government projects contest. And we, we apply with this project and now we, we will, will be receiving uh, support from the national government, which is crucial for this type of projects because um, it requires a lot of coordinated and articulated work with uh, 40 uh, local governments and many of them have different uh, you know, political parties that are in the government right now. So that, I mean, in Argentina is uh, quite a challenge to, to, you know, to uh, move over those maybe political differences to work together, I know, I mean, the administrations to work together. So, um, so I think it's really important for us to have that support from the national government and we really, we are really expecting to, to have a more easy um, approach with the, with the local government. So um, I will stop sharing because I wanted to show you like the old site and tell you about the, like this renovation we're working. So um, I think one of the main points of the renovation is uh, to make it an open data portal. Uh, we're working to have uh, just as the Buenos Aires data portal, a CCAN uh, portal, we're like, um, since it's an open source, of course, we are replicating it. But um, we are also trying to uh, incorporate more information. I mean, we're, we're looking forward to be not just an open data portal, but also um, to add, uh, you know, maybe articles of interest and analysis uh, about the metropolitan area. We want to gather all the academic production of the metropolitan area. Like we want to expand the site to be like a, a site of reference of knowledge of the area, you know, just the open data. So uh, I think that is a big part. And I think a lot of the, I mean, of the 40 local governments, just five of them have open data portals. So I think uh, it's also an opportunity for them um, to be publishing some of their data without maybe having to do all the, the steps of having their own portal. I mean, we're hoping um, we will be you know, helping them or sharing our experiences so they can have their own portal, but many of them have, um, they don't have maybe the conditions, they don't have the technical teams, they don't have, I think the open government culture I mean, they, I don't think, maybe some of them are not really working on access to information uh, yet. So I think it's an opportunity um, to be to work with maybe some of the strategic topics that uh, we want to work, for example. I mean, I think since the publishing of 2018 of this site and now, I think some of the agendas like climate action or gender or uh, health or production uh, have, you know, have become more important. And I think uh, we realize we need indicators on, on that matters. And we have to build those indicators because many of that data is not being, um, it's not created, you know, we have to work. So um, besides of creating a new data portal, I mean, one part of this project is this technical part of creating the, this, the website. But the other part is um, you not know, working on a sort of an implementation group on um, collaborative group uh, with the local governments, but also one of our biggest allies are the, you know, the universities. Uh, in the metropolitan area, there are like, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 um, national universities that are located you know, in the big, um, the big, you know, the biggest cities of the, of the AMBA. And they're really, um, they're really a big ally to, to first to approach the local governments and then to give us information to publish and they're uh, helping us to you know, promote and um, 
really boost the collaboration and the you know, and the plan these plans to open information They're because they need information information for the research so they're really uh, one of the main stakeholders but also um with the local ngos uh, of these of these uh, cities uh, of all the stakeholders to advance these projects i think we are losing you violeta oh we are sorry you then uh, where did you where did I lose you like in the last minute okay so um can you hear me now everyone sure um as I was saying we're we're uh, working on this uh, collaborative group with NGOs and universities so we're trying to uh, make like a, a this sort of round tables uh, to work on these different aspects of the of this open data project. For example, uh, this week we're creating a roundtable on data standards. Uh, we realized that many of the these local governments, since they're not have an open data portal, they also don't have uh, any sort of data standards law um, adopted in the in their administrations. So um, we're sharing our data standards and we're trying to understand what what they would like to work. So that's where we're starting right now in a, a round table on data standards, I think it's like the first step. And then we're trying to define maybe three or four topics open. As I say, uh, something related to urbanization, you know, as maybe, you know, like there's not, um, no, the I'm sorry, I'm trying to say asfalto, um, like they're not constructed. Roads. The roads, roads are not, like... yeah, the roads are not entirely constructed everywhere. So we're trying to map that and we're planning some uh, collaborative mapping experiences. Um, so I think we have to, we have to involve the citizens, the citizens of all these local governments to, to, to gather and to create some information. And, uh, Last, I would like to talk a little about the, the governance of this site. We're planning to have a co-governance. I think uh, we're trying to, to make the site um, share with all the local governments. So we want that every, every government has like their own user and they can upload and manage their own data. Because, I mean, from Buenos Aires, we're, we're really, um, we're carrying out this project, we're, we're like, um, we're moving forward this project, but we can't, uh, you know, uh, on the long on the long term, is we need to like have a co-governance. I think to to make it sustainable the site, and to share like the efforts. I think uh, so. We're trying to create this co-governance. Um, we will be having like this sort of round tables to discuss and to you know, find the best way to, to have this co-governance. And I think, yeah, we also, for example, for the design have. The site has its own identity. It's not related to any government. It has their own like AMBA identity. And what else? I'm, I'm looking through my notes. Ah, uh, yeah. One of the things uh, we added to this new site, we we have been doing a research on user experience. So I relate uh, to Canada. We also have doing a like a user experience um, and research because. If we want to have this map and these visualizations on the site, we want to make it like easy for you know, for the users to uh, so they can explore the data and make their own analysis and their own um, you know, their own reuse of the data. And we want them to offer the opportunity to make it on this website. Like they will have uh, the opportunity to, to create their own maps and their own visualizations at the, and to download these um these graphics uh so because we think there are many people um like maybe just downloading the data won't be um maybe enough and they need maybe like uh, these tools to make it easier to explore the data so that's pretty much uh the projects uh when we we have some some new things or some things published we will be sharing with the community so thank you for for listening 
Uh, thank you so much. This is a really uh, interesting experience, not only because you're thinking of a co-governance of, of data or of the of this new data portal, which is something that um, unless you talk about, I don't know, health uh, or, or specific sectors, like talking about a metropolitan area, uh, sometimes it's like, it's difficult to foresee, but it's really important because there are many decisions that are taken at the metropolitan level. And we don't, well, I'm, I'm Argentinian, so I, we don't have a metropolitan entity such as Chile that has like their own political governance uh, to manage that data. Um, so, well, I think that also Nicolas' presentation about metadata and architecture will be like really useful for, for this case. Um, and the last thing I, I want to say that this also like makes me like a sound about the role of national um, statistics offices, which uh, in the case of Argentina should be like opening uh, data in an open data format to reuse or, or to use it like uh, more easily. So I don't know um, if there are like any questions. I see that uh, Andreas is asking, um, how do you show users and which spatial units and, and data sets you are covering? Um, and are you using the the cut up. Uh, I think that these are architectural things that you are like now in the process of defining because now you're using data from from the census, right? So maybe if you could yes. like explain which are your plans on how you will connect uh, this TCAT platform with the rest of the of the data from from the other entities. Yes, um, we're working um, inside the Buenos Aires government. There's a group that works with all the spatial data, the geospatial data. So I don't think maybe I can answer that, that technical questions, but maybe I can get the answer and get back to you. <laughs> I'm really sorry, but uh, there's like another team that prepares all the geospatial data. But you, are, you are using Andino right now, right? In the... Uh, no, you're not using Andino, Andino anymore. Okay. No, we update the second okay. version. Sorry, yeah. I, I also thought this is maybe more question to Nicola, but uh, no, no for offense, me. it's also something <laughs> that um, maybe you <laughs> will have to, to cover. What more about uh, a question to Nicola? Sorry. Okay. I will answer. Uh, on our side for the geospatial content, so it's not the, the, the DCAT, it's we are using the ISO standard, so it's GMD information, so it's not related to DCAT. It's a GMD special extent, so it's a bonding box in uh, lat long coordinates. Uh, okay, but and then and not in, like in terms of technical uh, technique, but I mean, you also have like you said you have different catalogs, and these catalog cover data sets, or uh, sorry, they have data sets in it which cover different spatial areas. Like, for example, you have a, like from a from province, um, uh, um, uh, in a province will uh, catalog, you have a data set, which is also called, uh, covering data about municipalities. And my question is in terms, or if you check uh, like from your side, someone is looking then for data of a certain municipality. How do you make, um, how do you show um, that user with this spe special need data which is covering information about his municipality? That's my question then, but maybe it's too specific, sorry. Uh, yes, and I think I have issues with my connection, but I'll ask you <laughs> quite a bit when you are asking a question. Sorry. But, uh... so I, I will write you in, in uh, and, and uh, ask you in with words in emails, sorry. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Thank you, Andreas, and thank you, Nicola. Um, does anyone ha have any other questions for our panelists to uh, today? <coughs> no?
I think we don't. <laughs> we, did, we did very fast. <laughs> I think so. Um, well, my last question, I think uh, that Javier and, and, and you, Violeta, especially talked about um, people's interoperability. Uh, and we also, we always think that data needs to be interoperable, comprehensive, timely, like, and, and, and check and have all the checklists from, from the open data principles. Uh, but something that uh, Nati Carfi usually mentions uh, is this like people interoperability and that in order for things to, to make things happen, we need um, people working together across jurisdictions and sectors uh, towards opening up data that is useful and can be reused. And it's like in a specific format so communities and people can actually use them. Um, can you tell us about some like people's interoperability problems you've been having? And then I will also uh, like to hear from, from Nicola. Um, okay, so I think one of the main challenges of these uh, projects, of the Amadata project, is that sometimes because, uh, as, as I mentioned, of some political differences, uh, you know, reaching out the technical teams is a bit difficult because, and we also, this, for this month, we have the, an election. So that's, that's a bit complicated, but I think that reaching the technical teams and maybe, you know, having more of a technical and not political conversation, it's the way to, to gather this collaboration. And I think that um, when we approach this uh, local government that has like, zero experiences in open data and open government. It's a challenge because maybe they really don't know what um, what are we proposing or what are we, you know, uh, what, like what our project is about. But I also think it's an opportunity because if they have to start um, working on open government and open data, maybe like we can agree on, you know, how to get the data to be like the same standard, to be interoperable. So it's a challenge and also an opportunity. If, I mean, if we can gather a lot of a lot of the local governments and they will start from zero, maybe we can all start, you know, agreeing on the same uh, standards. It's a challenge and an opportunity, I think. Yeah, for sure. Nicola, do you, did you have like any challenges regarding um, people working uh, with these systems? Not really challenge with people. The I think the only challenge we got is for technical aspect with metadata standard. Each province and they are system. They have their they are using a standard, but they are always tweaking their metadata the model to fit with their system. So the issue is more being able to read the information correctly and translate the information in our system. Uh, however, collaboration is quite important. Even in this uh, project, it's all Government of Canada doing the, the job. We are uh, synchronizing the, pro the portal, but we need to get the province informed. It's their data, so we are not the federal government and we are getting all the information without telling to the province, hey, by the way, we are using your data in the, our system, so we need to inform them, but there's no uh, specific uh, issue with collaboration. Thanks. Um, there's a question in the chat for the Buenos Aires team. Uh, so Cecilia is asking, uh, who are the main users of the platform or the AMBA portal? And how are you promoting the use of that portal? Or your plans, I mean, in the new version of the portal? So we're working with the hypothesis that our main users of the platform will be, I mean, once we uh, publish this new version. Uh, local government employees, I agree working with that hypothesis. Um, students and uh, you know, uh, academic, um, you know, like academic community of the AMBA and maybe productive sectors or uh, entrepreneurs, you know, uh, people that maybe will use the information to make, to, to develop new ideas or new apps or developments. Uh, because there are little information about the, the productive um, profile of the AMBA. I mean, it's, um, it represents 40% of the 
all, of, all the production of the of Argentina, the economic production. I don't know what to say, but so it's a really big, it's an important um, area with a lot of industries, a lot of uh, economic uh, impact. So I think uh, we're working with those three audiences. As, there are a lot of uh, metropolitan organizations or metropolitan institutions uh, on the on the AMBA. So we think that these these organizations uh, could use all this uh, open data and indicators to work with. Thanks. I think Nati had a question. Nati, are you? there yeah yeah hi everyone thanks for for joining the session i just had a question because we always get asked uh, by by open data charters adopters about regulations about uh legal frameworks so out of your experience doing this this type of, of work of trying to collaborate with different uh levels of, of government and other jurisdictions just out of your experience um would you would you rather recommend to go ahead and 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 create these platforms and then understand what the regulation is uh, what regulation is needed or would you rather have a legal framework and then develop the platforms so which which step would you take and it's it's just a, a recommendation based on your experience it doesn't have to uh, we would seen Okay, so I'll start. I think um, it's a tricky question because I think having a legal framework is sort of an ideal scenario, but um, sometimes I think, and in this case with the AMBA, um, the AMBA project, um, it's easier to, you know, to take little steps and start uh, working you know, with the groups and understanding like maybe their open government ecosystem um, and then maybe um, working to have maybe, because we're different unit, um, political like units. Or, I mean, the city has, I mean, the, we, ha we have an open data um, legal framework from I think almost 10 years or maybe nine years. And I think um, it could be, it could be like a setback to wait to have that legal framework on the other local government to start to work. So I think uh, I'm hoping that we, we will have that, but maybe um, if they uh, start to work that and they see the impact it has on their own administrations, uh, eventually they will uh, develop their own legal frameworks, I think. I don't know if Nicolas has um, something to say or if anyone in the call uh, wants to ask or discuss about Nadi's question. On my side, uh, <laughs> nothing to, to add. It's uh, all the legal framework is with the province and the federal government. So it's already there. So <laughs> we are at the end of the process. So. It's already done by, by the province. And by keeping the original license, I think we are doing a, a good job with all the legal aspects. Thanks. Um, so if there are no additional questions, I would like to thank um, Javier, Violeta, and Nicolas for joining this call. Um, I mean, these experiences are amazing and like we are really looking forward to to know what what are the next steps and which are the outcomes and the results of both of them um and for our next meeting uh we are going to talk about equity this is just a, a, a general message so if anyone has like any experience that would like to share with the group let us know um as you know this will be the well we have two more um meetings that we are ending so um 
yeah, if you have like any experience about equity and, and, and inclusion, inclusion, let us know. Uh, we will send you an email on that. And yeah, thank you so much uh, for participating and see you next month. Thank you. Thank Bye. You Thanks, much. everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye